stop the chat out of here. Here we go. Come on now. Uh, I guess I didn't check audio. I should do that. Is it working? It's working. Cool. Cool. Hey, hey, Quacker. How you do? Hey, 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 QOD today. Are you an early bird or a night owl or neither? Both, Trent. I guess that's an option, too. Jenny says night owl. Overkill mill early bird, silver night owl. <laughs> Candy Thunder's a midday pigeon. <laughs> it's so fucking accurate. <laughs> She's a midday pigeon. She doesn't get up early. She doesn't stay up late. Really thrives in that midday range. <laughs> That's about it. Oh, hell. Kathy Joe, thank you for sharing the live. Greatly appreciate that. Cloud Mama says, Neither. <laughs> Perpetually exhausted pigeon. Bobby, Tr <laughs> Bobby, Bobby Joe. <laughs> oh, man. Candy Thunder, would you say I'm, I'm more of a night owl or a, or a morning bird? Both. Both. I'm both. An unrealistic combination, she says. Uh, Lady Stormfly, maybe that's it. She's, she says, I have ADHD, so I can get up super early and still go to bed super late. Yeah, I think maybe that's it. It's just like an ADHD thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cherry Blossom, thank you for this share. Greatly appreciate that. Smiles as creature of the night. For sure. Heather, chronically exhausted. I hear you. <laughs> Subeka, I'm more of a seagull. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Uh, Purple Butterfly Princess, thank you so much. Appreciate the love there. Tony Spark sharing the live. Quack and Carol Wagner sharing the live as well. Thank you so much for that. Greatly appreciate that. You send, you send my videos to your mom. Nice. Hi, Purple Butterflies, mom. You tell her I said hi. Extreme Night Owl Doodles Dragon, which often lets, uh, lets you watch the lives. Heck yeah. There you go. You know, being a night owl, I'm sure has has similar benefits to being an early bird, um, because you get that that period of time where like the rest of the world hasn't woken up yet or is already to sleep. That's why I love night shifting because like at night especially, I think you have more more morning morning birds, morning birds, more morning words are hard already, more morning birds in the world than night owls because at night. It just gets it gets super quiet. Interruptions don't happen as often, so I'm able to focus more on things. What are you laughing at? I don't know. Early bird. Morning. Put my glasses on to appear smarter. Cause clearly I need the IQ points right now. Early birds, not morning birds. I pulled a candy thunder. I'm mixing up phrases here. Michelle Heather with the here we go. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate that. <laughs> Lady Stormfly with the heart me. Roberto with the rose. Paranormal gal. And a whole bunch of others with them. Lightning bolts, which is our first goal. Two and a half K lightning bolts to get Candy Thunder up here today. We have some killer stories. We got some good ones. Tanya Cooper with the rose and ice cream cones. Thank you so much for that. Greatly appreciate it. Michelle Heather with the heart me. Emily Louise Penny Haas. Becky Poirier. Jill. Tammy Lee. Thank you guys so, so much. Greatly appreciate all the love there. Salina Albert, Lil Red, TLS, Hippie Reiki Master. Thank you guys. Greatly appreciate it. Sergeant Mac, good to see you here. Good to see you. Bleach the kids here on the live. Thank you so much. Cloud Mama, is Tony still lost on what today is? He was never lost. He just doesn't he just doesn't like to be surprised with the with the camera. Golden Owl. There you go. You gotta be a night owl. It's in the name. Stay at home mom, thank you so much uh, for the share. Candy Thunder there as well. <laughs> Anastasia, you got the notification I was going live while you were watching the YouTube video. Heck yes. I'm everywhere. RV Plant Mom, yes, you can absolutely be both. Anastasia, resub and to stay a member of the storm. Heck yes. Glad to have you in the gosh heckin' fam. Let's rock and roll, shall we? Let us rock and let us roll on this beautiful Wednesday slash hump day slash live day. Today, 
Coming up, we have stories about overbearing moms, dog napping, romance scammers, suspicious coworkers, roommate bathroom drama, and not just cake stories, but spicy cake stories. We don't mean like spice cake. We mean like spicy stories that are also cake stories. Spicy cake stories. Heck yes. Again, the first goal that we have today is two and a half K bolts to get Candy Thunder up here. Today's like goal is 700 K. So please tippity tap away and please make sure you are sharing the stream. Greatly appreciate it when you do that. Make sure you hit up Linktree in uh, in our bio to subscribe on YouTube. If you are not subscribed there yet, only a small portion of the videos that we do make it to TikTok all of them get posted to YouTube, so you'll see a lot more content there. We even have a membership on YouTube that includes some more exclusive content. And uh, if you haven't already heard Piano Man, which is uh, a fictional story to fall asleep to that I wrote, uh, part one of that is on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. I hope you've had a chance to listen to it. If you haven't, go check it out. That is available to everyone. And part two is being written right now. Obviously not right this second because we're talking but I'm in the process of writing part two. Uh, I'm 33% done with it right now. I know, I know Candy Thunder loves when I, when I apply the math to it. Hey, don't forget, we have this going on today. Hey, Honey Bear's with us for month four. Anastasia, subscribe for the first time. Welcome to the Gosh Heckin' Fam. Wheel of Thunder at the end of today's live. The top 10 gifters to new members of the Storm to existing members of the Storm will go on the Wheel of Thunder. We'll spin it during the VIP live for some cool prizes. And we want to talk a little bit about this. The uh, Mission Protect the Cake. Oh, sorry. I didn't even see it sitting there where we have some more information for you. So um, we're going to be raising money to put together cake kits for our local food banks that will look something like this. We've got a couple sample ones put together. We haven't we have yet to bake one yet. We're going to do a test bake, though, and make sure that all of this works together. So we're going to be putting some of these together to give to local food banks um, to prevent kids, especially from having to go through birthdays without a cake, because that just ain't right. And we want to do something about it. So uh, we're going to be doing that and focusing on that during our Thanksgiving themed live coming up later this month. Look out for that. It's going to be awesome. Also, as a reminder, no spoilers, please. If you spoil, you're going to get muted and you don't want to get muted. Right. So just don't do it. Just don't do it. Hey, uh, Kate Crush with us for month four as a member of the fam. Heck yeah. Tran Paranormal Gal, uh, Megan Carroll, all uh, everybody throwing lightning bolts up here. We will definitely get you recognized as soon as we hit that goal. Uh, but also Paranormal Gal with the high bears, Julius with the rose, Graham with the heart me. Thank you so much for that. Fly on the wall, a flower, Amber, Mary with the I see you. It's a creepy set of eyes there. Janine with the heart me as well. Thank you guys so much. Cherry Blossom with that team bracelet. That's a cool one. And we haven't been able to find that in uh, on our side to be able to set it as a goal. Otherwise, we would. Kid Roscoe with a rose. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate that. Janine Plutbug. I still haven't screwed that name up yet, and I'm not gonna. Selena Sharon. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate Oh, you guys already hit it. Look at that. You done hit that goal already. We'll go ahead and get some thanks going for it. Kit has EDS, AK Mary. Haunted Gal, Sharon, Day Newton, RJ, HJ1, Meg, C420, Mama Jams, Pam K, Postal Princess, Trin, Rose G. Or Rosig? Is it Trin Rose G or Trin Rosig? I'm going to say it both ways. Mama Silver, Lady Stormfly, Hannah McKay, Tamara, Kid Roscoe, Ob's Little World, Jenny Sue, Dylan Sprague, V Baby, Akira Yu, Enim Toad, TLS Journey, Tony Spark, There you go, Jade Sue, Not That Ellen, Anastasia Smith, Overkill Mill, Rain Falls, Janine Benham, Golden House Supply Co., uh, stay-at-home mom from NM, Chelsea Stevens, Kelsey C, Piotr, Donna, 12661, Soapy Socks, Fluffy Buddy, Plutbug, Chipmunk Forever, Join Joinson, and Candy Thunder. Thank you all so much for the support. Greatly appreciate it. Oh, there you are. There you are. You're right there. Let me get the next one set up here, and we'll bring Candy Thunder on to give a, a hello to you. My next one is... This and it is this many of them. This is the one that is going to unlock the spicy cake story. Spicy, a cake, a story. Okay, we have 
650 donuts. Let's go ahead and welcome her up, the one and only. Ladies and Ladies gentlemen. And hear the music so to her i'm just dancing to nothing <laughs> it's just silence let me bring it up a hand okay. welcome tater hi hi guys um i don't really have anything to talk about today oh you didn't plan this out ahead of time no no that's all right we don't uh, we don't typically plan what we're talking about out ahead of time well i'm blind reacting to everything so i never plan i just follow the notes you all give me here we we plan for you so uh, um so we're going to talk about the the cake kit mission can protect it, the cake but uh we replaced the oil that the cake mix requires with applesauce and then the eggs uh with carbonated water so they don't have to have anything um to make the cake we still have to bake one though and try it out yep, i we're mean gonna make one it wouldn't be right to not not make and try a cake that we're going to be giving as a kit to other people. Yes. And there's... Um, Mainly, I just want to eat cake. Also, birthday candles. hey Oh, Yes. You know what we need? And, of course, the cake mix that I got is like a dirt cake type cake mix. Why not? You know. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Uh, someone mentioned 700K. That's something that we can talk yes. about. 700K. We are actually going to do a fun video for hitting... 700k um on monday because that's you guys are freaking crazy that's awesome it's really very cool uh golden now <laughs> we'll have Sergeant we'll have Mac. a uh, we'll have a page no. set up specifically for that um and then and then during that live we'll be taking a portion of of the proceeds from that day and actually dedicating them to this but we'll also have a page where yep. where someone where anybody can donate to mission protect the cake at any time and we'll throw some information about that out soon uh before we do the live so we can get a get a head start um, on it Miss Helene, if you if you want to share like what's in those birthday bags, I mean we're we're open to suggestions too. So if there's something like that we're missing oh, yeah. or that we can add to it or do in addition to, um, and we can share that we can talk about that in the VIP live too. Um, birthday bags would be cool. Yeah, I like that idea. That would be uh, very cool. Pam K seven hundred thousand followers on TikTok. We passed it. Yes. Earlier this week, right? Or was it late last week? It was uh, Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, there you go. We hit 700K. Yes. Holy cow. Nisi, we're, we're just getting started here. We're good. All right, we're going to kick off the first story. Let's go. All right, have fun, guys. Thanks, Taylor. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> I'm just over here, like, cracking open the, uh, the icing and just eating it with my fingers over here. That'd get weird. It'd be hard to talk. Night Court, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate that. Tony Spark, exercising them moderator powers already. Look, they were coming for us, huh? The check my private video people were already showing up already we're at 703.6 right now heck yes yeah Kristen, we've we've done that for a while too especially with brownies um the applesauce brownies yeah they're they're like fluffier but oh denise you didn't get a, a notification you if you haven't done it yet you can subscribe for sms notifications um at dusty-thunder.com there's also i think a, a link on link tree to take you directly to that too but we have a service now where you can give us your phone number and we'll shoot you a text right before i go live so you know heck yes all right let's dive into our very first story for the day here we go this is from the aita subreddit and this is titled Am I the astronaut for insisting that my mom pay back the money she made me owe to a thrift store? The other day, I, 22 male, met, went with some friends to a various, I already screwed it up. Words are, this is not a good start, folks. Words are, I need to put on my words are hard shirt, I guess. <clears throat> the other day, I, 22 male, went with some friends to various thrift stores to see if we could find a leather trench coat for a reasonable price. We found one, and it's exactly what I was looking for. The coat is not in pristine condition, but I didn't care. The price seemed reasonable, and I paid for it using my debit card. I got home and showed my mom the coat. She asked how much it cost. I told her, and she said that it was awfully expensive for a used coat. She asked if I could show her the receipt, so I did. She then asked if it was possible that they charged me twice. I told her no, and that I was fine with the, with the amount I paid, and I was just happy to have the coat. 
She told me that she was just making sure that I had done the math correctly since it's something I struggle with and that I was keeping track of the money in my account to be sure there was enough for the trip my friend and I are going on in January. At this point, I was really starting to get annoyed. I told her again that I was fine with the amount that I paid and I still had enough for the trip. We had already booked our plane tickets and reservations. I told her that I appreciated her help, but there wasn't any issue. And could she please let this go? She gave a very reluctant sounding, okay. I went to my room to lie down for a while. Later that evening, my mom told me that she had called the store asking if they were sure they hadn't charged me twice. Initially, they told her that it did seem like I overpaid for the coat, so they issued a partial refund. But they then called back a few minutes later and said that they in fact had charged the right amount. They tried to cancel the refund, but in case I got it, I would need to pay them back. I was pissed and yelled at my mom that I told her multiple times that I was fine with the amount that I paid and she needs to respect my boundaries. She admitted that she should have just listened and that she would have and that she would be the one to pay them back if the refund went through and I could keep the money for my trip. I told her thank you and thought that that was the end of it. A few days later, I checked my account and saw that hundreds of dollars, roughly four times the amount I paid, had been deposited into my account. This doesn't seem like a problem. <clears throat> I showed it to my mom and she told me that I needed to pay it back. I told her that she had told me she would let me keep the money and be the one to pay them back. Okay, I see where this is going now. <clears throat> she said that I could keep the money she thought they owed me, but not the additional money. I told her that I wouldn't owe this money if she hadn't meddled, which is true. She agreed that she was in the wrong, but it's nonetheless my responsibility and the right thing to do. I reminded her that her reasoning for doing this was because she was worried I wouldn't have enough money for my trip, and now I have an additional $300, so mission accomplished for her. She's insisting that I pay it back, but I feel that she should keep her promise and be the one to pay, as I wouldn't be in this position if it wasn't for her. Okay. Um, <laughs> the question is, am I the asking out for insisting that my mom pay back the money she made me owe to a thrift store? Which I feel like is a misleading title, right? And, and you know what? Mom shouldn't have meddled. He's right about that. Should not have meddled. But this is like a, it's a thrift store. I'm going to make an assumption here that it's a not-for-profit organization that that they have a community mission where they actually do some good and this was an error where they accidentally sent too much money back to him. And they were trying to undo it anyway. So at some point they're going to be aware that they sent him way too much money and then he's just going to be the asshole that won't return the accidental money that this not-for-profit organization sent to him. I understand a lot of thrift stores are not not-for-profit. And they're for-profit organizations, but for the sake of the story, because we don't know, let's assume that it is a not-for-profit organization with a local community mission. So they accidentally sent him too much money, and he's like, nah, I'm keeping it. Ma, you can you can pay the stuff back. And I think her offering to pay back whatever partial refund that they had issued in case it actually went all the way through makes sense. It does not apply to them sending hundreds of dollars accidentally through to this. So, yeah, you're an asshole, OP. How big an asshole are you? How big a boy are you? Was that Roy D. Mercer? Candy Thunder? The how big a boy are you? Yeah, Roy D. Mercer. There's a throwback. There's a throwback. So yeah, whatever the difference is, is what he owes them back. And in this case, I think, you know, I, I think mom's offer to pay back whatever partial refund that went through is now negated as well. Now, what he can do is he can pull the money out, give it to his mom, and she can go return it to them. And that would be her still, still making some kind of penance here for her meddling, which caused all of this shit to happen. But he's still an asshole for wanting to keep this money, right? Uh, I mean... In a world without consequences, money just shows up in your bank and you're like, oh, cool. But there's a consequence for this one. It would have a negative effect on the community. <laughs> so what do we think here? We've got Ascon 2 from Morgan. Shanna says, everyone sucks here. Ascon 3. I, I do agree with everyone sucks here. Definitely agree with that. Uh, we've got a one. It's not his money. He should be full. He fully should be re returning it. Agree with that TLS. Andrea says one. Ashley says three. There's So there's a lot of varying opinions. Opinions here. Michelle says, is he really blaming his mom for him stealing something that isn't his? Uh, yeah. And 
he's not viewing it as stealing it because they accidentally gave it to him. And he's like, oh, sweet. Then it's a gift. It's not stealing, right? Yeah, I mean, it is. Because you know exactly what happened. <clears throat> Where would we put him, though? We can go ahead and get the everyone sucks here out of the way. Because, yeah, this happened because of her. She shouldn't meddle. He repeated himself several times and said, don't, don't, don't. And she still did. Um, I don't know that this is an evil thing. It kind of sounds like a he's 22. So still still a young person. Still young. This is a brozo thing. It's just it's just something that is probably lack of life experience and uh, and a very simplified worldview probably create here and i don't know that if he that he was evil he just isn't thinking everything through here now it, it's wrong it's definitely wrong the way he's trying to apply it here but i don't know that he's evil for it he's just trying to take advantage of, of multiple people here so let's go ahead and put him on two definitely should not have done this definitely shouldn't have i don't think he's evil he's just trying to use some backward logic to to make himself feel okay with this and it's not it's not. It's not okay. Oh, wait, Chris says, hold up. He's 22. It sounded like a teenager. Yeah. Um, yeah. An, an immature 22 is what it sounds like. And Bridget, I agree. It would never would have happened if his mom had stayed out of it like he asked her to. Um, but I think we also got a glimpse into the kind of logic that makes sense for him. And now you kind of understand a little more why his mother meddles. Now she needs to stop. She definitely needs to stop because she's not always going to be there to help him navigate the world. And he's got to learn how to do it on his own. And it, he's got to learn that that his current worldview and logic won't hold up. So he's got to start doing it on his own. Uh, he does have to pay it back, though. I mean, he's got to. <laughs> Aubrey, it's, it's so petty. Not evil, though. Yeah. Regardless, he should return money that isn't his. Matt says, yeah. And yeah, she's, she's helicoptering him and probably thinks she needs to, but you don't need to. Hey, we're at 533 is 650 right now on our donut goal. So we're rocking and rolling there. Justina, Elise, uh, Fieri, Quinn, Natalie, TLS, Rosie Perkins, and Roberta, Dawn, and again, Pam K, Joanne. Thank you guys so much for the love there. Greatly appreciate it. Jennifer Topping with the first gift, sending a heart me through. Thank you so much for that. Glad to see you here. Rosie Holly, uh, Tracy, fly on the wall, sending those donuts through. Trin, Jasmine, Jasmine Snuggles, Tessa. Selena, 88 Debs. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate all the love there. And there was Kelly McMillan with us for month four as a member of the storm. Heck yes. Heck yes. Doing it with a thrift shop is why it's evil. I don't think he's coming from a place of evil, though. I don't think this is a place of malice. I think he's using backward logic to to try to make it to try to make it not malicious. So he's convinced himself that it's not. Yeah, sweet Shelly, with us as a member of the storm. Heck yes, heck yes. Oh wait, hang on. We achieved our uh, our subscriber goal here. We hit our 575, Tony Spark. Holy cow. Oh, we've been chasing that thing for a long time. And it's just been up and down and up and down and up and down. Mom of Kaken, thank you so much for, for sharing the live. Clarissa, thank you so much for the follow. Greatly appreciate that. Do what? Uh, I think it was Sweet Shelly. Yep, Sweet Shelly put us over the edge. Hey, Sweet Shelly. Resubbing got us over the 575 hump. <laughs> we... we we have like the little itty bitty. <laughs> that was actually not bad. For <laughs> no, that wasn't bad for the little ones. It's still like hugely anticlimactic compared to the the normal confetti cannons. This little guy was like pew pew. Thank you so much, though. That's awesome. Um, yeah, the gifted subs are a new thing, and I'm I'm still not 100 percent sure. Um, how all of it works or how it pops up, but gifted subs being a thing now is super, super cool. Yeah, you can gift a subscription. It's wild. Easier to clean up. Bespokely made popcorn says, yeah, true. Those suck. Yeah, the, the big confetti cans we suck to clean up. We might have burned we might have burned up a shop back. Maybe two. <laughs> Maybe two of them with the confetti cannons. Ah, we might have burned them up. Oh, hey, we have yeah. 
Oh, we hit the gift goal too. How, look at that. Hey, Candy Thunder, we hit our uh, our subscriber goal. We hit our five seventy five. Yeah, heck yeah. Still effective. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. M Chatterbug, thank you so much for the follow. Hello, and thank you for uh, sharing the live. Crazy Cosmo with uh, sharing the live as well. Thank you so much for that. Greatly appreciate it, Mike Prieto, with the share there too. Use a broom. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it gets like in several different, in every little nook and cranny possible. My shift key on my keyboard stopped working the other day and it's because it had confetti like crammed up underneath it. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, Nisi says we can hear Tony. Is the mic working? No, he's just, that's just, he's just loud. He's just loud. Carol Wagner gigs. Shannon, thank you so much for the shares. Um, Marlette, Marlette Francois, Marley Francois, Mother Trucker, Zoe Silver, Clarissa with the shares as well. Amber with the shares. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate that. We Tree Lark with the share too. Let me get some people thanked on this donut goal and then we'll move on to the next goal and the next story. Let's get some music. Let's get some music going here. Postal Princess 76, Kit has EDS, TLS Journey, Anastasia, Haunted Gal, Julius Villela. Villela? Villela? Oh, yeah. Julius. We'll go with that. Boxer Butt, Kelsey C, Michelle Heather, Fly on the Wall, Fieri, Flynn Yato, Sergeant Mac, Chesh, Trend Rose G, oh, Rosig, DJJM, Janine Benham, Jenny Sue, Pam K, T Hef, Elise Newman, Dariego, Bazinga, Meg C420, Rainfalls, Tony Spark, uh, Annabelle, Chelsea Stevens, Dylan Sprague, Jade Sue, C Sizzle, Overkill Mill, Akasha, Heidi J, Ashley Page, Bailey Chapman, Twinkle Saz, Mama Silver, K Crush, Debbie Hughes, V Baby, Jenny Walker, Berlioz, Diana, Soapy Socks, Justina, Piotr, and Angie Holding. Thank you guys so much for all the love there. We're going to get our next one set up. What does Tony Spark have in store for us here? I'm going to find it. Yeah. Okay. Got that many and this many. So, uh, Caden Thunder isn't here yet, but this this goal is going to unlock him. We're going to have a cake story and a Caden Thunder appearance. Appearance. I'm spelling incorrectly today. It's it's uh words are hard. Words are especially hard today for whatever reason. We have a goal of gamer cats. We're doing gamer cats now. We are on the gamer cats. Candy Thunder sending the first gamer cat through Jarby Rise, Raven, Kylo Will, uh Crazy Cosmo, Lady of Oz. Did I get that right? It's all moving on me. Lady of Oz, Lisey Lex, thank you guys so much. Mother Trucker, Pam K, they're already coming through there. Heck yes. Heck yes. Okay, let's go ahead and bounce over to our next story. Am I doing the, the spicy cake story now? Sweet. Spicy cake story number one. Spicy cake story number one. Oh, there are more than one. Rachel, welcome to the Gosh Eckin fam. Glad to have you here. Marley, thank you so much for being here. Have fun at work. Have fun at work today. Okay, here we go. Spicy cake reward story time. This is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the astronaut for telling my daughter if she hates her stepmom so much, she is free to leave? My daughter is 20 and in college. She has a dorm on campus, but she doesn't live there. I love my daughter, but she can be a lot. Drama follows her everywhere, and I was going... And I was hoping she would grow out of it, but it never happened. Due to this, she has gone through multiple friend groups. And as she puts it, they are so they are jealous. So she doesn't have college friends. Hey, Coral, thank you so much. And welcome to the Gosh Eckin fam. My phone is blowing up right now. So I've got to go do not disturb mode. There we go. Okay. There we go. Now we're good. Now, I married her stepmom when my daughter turned 18. I was never married, and her bio mom wasn't in the picture, so this was an adjustment, but I want to make it clear that I did the right steps. I introduced them when I was serious, two years in. I spent more time with her. I didn't force them together. We made boundaries for my wife, like punishment comes to me, not her. When she was struggling, I got her into therapy and did sessions with her. She stopped when she hit 18, since I couldn't make her go. My daughter is making it impossible for them to get along. If my wife tells her food is ready, she gets pissed that she is bothering her. If she doesn't tell her, then she's pissed that she wasn't invited. It's contradiction after contradiction. I have talked to her. My wife has tried to do what she asked, and then she is pissed that she did that. It's impossible. Now to the main issue. My wife's birthday was yesterday. I put her, I put out her presents and cake on the table. Oh, no. 
Don't you tell me. Don't you tell me. I had to work. I had to work to do. I had work to do, so I left it all there. I came back, and all of her presents were open, and my daughter was eating a piece of cake. She done did it. She done crossed the gosh. She did it. She crossed the line. She crossed the line. I mean, she had crossed the line before, but she really crossed the line this time. I asked why the fuck she would do that. She told me she didn't deserve birthday presents. Okay. You sniveling little shit. I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? I did. This is when I had enough. And I told her she hated her stepmom so much she could leave. That she has a dorm and I don't want to see her until an apology to me and my wife happens. She started crying and called me a jerk. I've been getting a lot of texts from her and I'm doubting my decision. Am I the ass cannot? Hold up. Okay, last line here really bothers the ruined cake out of me. It says, I've been getting a lot of texts from her and I am doubting my decision. So what is she saying to try to guilt you into feeling like you did the wrong thing here? You're obviously being played. Obviously being played. Because you didn't regret your decision until you said you were getting texts from her. So what is it that she's saying to you that is playing you like a fiddle and making you feel bad here? You did everything you could. She's an adult now. She needs to get her shit together. And she cannot treat people like this and expect them to continue catering to her. She's always going to be your daughter. There is a line. There's a line that shall not be crossed that comes to respect, right? She's your kid. You're always going to love her. Your kids can just still do stupid things. And it is your job to still continue teaching her what is and is not okay. And this is not okay. And for her benefit, you shouldn't feel bad for this. For her benefit, you have to teach her that this is not okay. She's 20. She's 20 now. She knows better. She knows exactly what she's doing. And she just thinks that she can run all over you because there are no consequences for anything that she does because you have to accept her no matter what. She thinks she can do whatever the hell she wants as evidenced by her opening up your wife's fucking presents and eating her cake because she doesn't deserve presents. (sighs) Unless your wife has done something to warrant this, which your daughter is unwilling to, to tell you, which means there is nothing. This is unacceptable. And I think you're doing the right thing here by saying you can't come back until an apology happens. I would follow that up and say until an apology happens and you are only allowed to continue being around here if your behavior changes. This will not happen again ever. Ever. This is about so much more than the cake. The cake is just the icing on the cake. If that makes sense, it is everything before this was already terrible and we need to put her on the ASCON scale. Let's do that. Into the dock. Okay. There is a, uh, there, there is a comment from the dad that's that Tony spark is gonna, gonna paste in here so that we can read it. And then we're going to put daughter on the ASCON scale here. Okay, so here, here's a comment from OP, just, uh, just to put everyone's mind at ease. OP says, I'm confused why they think she has a personality disorder with the therapy. Oh, wait, no. That's OP's comment or this is someone else's comment? This is OP's comment. He's talking about people who are commenting. Oh, okay. OP's talking about other commenters at this point and says, I'm confused why they think she has a personality disorder with the therapy. You would think that would have been noticed. Not once did anyone think that bad behavior doesn't equal personality disorder. I know people are quick to, to blame behavioral problems on behavioral disorders. That's not always the case. And even if there is some kind of disorder at 20 years old, most people learn how to deal with those kind of things and keep themselves somewhat in check. At least Uh, there's, there's another comment from OP here. I grew it up in a suck it up type of home. So I really tried to make her home safe and where she can express anything. I wish I just told her at the beginning that she needs to cope. So I think I went too far in the other direction. Okay. Okay. So, so, um, now OP is feeling bad for being too coddling 
with her and allowing her to be too expressive and uh, and not never giving her the tough love of saying, suck it up and walk it off, rub some dirt on it. And now now you're going to have to balance it. That's the tough part. You're going to have to balance it by now running hard the opposite direction to try to balance this thing out. And it's a tough lesson. And we talk about this a little bit, but when you try to protect your kids from everything, when they get out into the real world, it is that much more of a shock to their system because they haven't been able to ease into it. I am alarmingly concerned about how your daughter is going to be able to function in the real world at this point. And, and one of the things that I've learned over the past few years or a couple of years really is that how your kids, especially teenagers behave at home is completely different than how they behave in the outside world, right? Your kids can be completely open, unfiltered with you. And that can come across very raw. Um, but but they can completely control themselves in the real world and act completely differently. So hopefully this is something that she does just at home. If not, big old red flags here. Big old red flags. I, I think we know where daughter's going on the Ascon scale here. I think it's, it's, she's, she's an evil little shit. She's a 20 year old. I'm still calling her an evil little shit because she has the mentality of, um, of a toddler who's not getting her way right now. And it's malicious. It is 100% malicious. Right now, OP, your daughter may not be an evil person, but she's behaving in an evil way. And although she's 20, there's still some responsibility on you to, to help show her the way to correct that and to help reinforce what the right thing to do is. But, uh, I mean, let's go back and address this for a second, though. She stopped going to therapy when she turned 18 because dad couldn't force her to do it anymore. Opie married his new wife when daughter was 18, right? So those two things coincided here. She clearly needs to go back and deal with things because she is acting out about this specifically. You can't force her to do it, though. She's an adult now. She has to make that decision on her own. And she has to realize on her own that if this is affecting her life this badly, then she needs to go address the problem. So I'd say just, you know, try to convince her to go, but you can't force her to go. But you also can't solve this problem for her. And she's probably not going to solve this problem for herself. So suggest it, recommend it as often as possible. Um, And right now she's not allowed to come back until she fixes things. And she's not going to be able to stay around until she permanently fixes things. And that's going to require therapy. So maybe just tie it in with that statement. It's tough. It's tough. Kayana, hey, good to see you there. Good to see you there. And we are at 50 of 80 of the Gamer Cats right now. And as a reminder, that's going to unlock a cake story and Caden Thunder, who will be here shortly. He's at class right now. She needs to learn the hard way, Shell. Yeah, uh, yeah, but but the <clears throat> the coinciding marriage and therapy ending is a signal, right? It's a signal that she she definitely needs to to go back, but it has to be of her own volition. And Nisi, you're right. Pain creates change. This pain of saying you cannot come back until you fix this, hopefully will create the needed change. But that needed change for her is going to be that much harder because he's coddled her to this point and she doesn't know how to solve her own problems. So it's going to be even harder for her. But she's an adult. You can't force her to. Chrissy in Australia. Hello. Good to see you there. Queen to Don, uh, no mental health issues. Correct. That's uh, that's what dad says. At least she was in therapy up to that point and they didn't report anything like that. So uh, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't do therapy, though, just because there aren't mental health issues. I mean, everybody should be doing therapy, honestly. Poppy Pixie, uh, Helene team using with the follows. Thank you so much for that. Greatly appreciate that. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, so I don't think I officially put dad here, but dad, NTA. Your daughter's an ASCON one. Shitty situation. Tiana says not all the therapists will say something since diagnosis isn't what some are comfortable with. Sure, I understand that. I mean, as far as he knows, there's nothing wrong. And at this point with her being 20, I mean, the ball's in her court on it. Either way. Leah the lab and Lisa with the rose. Aw, it's a lab. It's a doggy. She's got a doggy in a profile pic there. Lady Stormfly, Jocelyn, thank you so much for that. Leah the Lab again, TLS, um, Marjoline, Chrissy, Tony Spark with the Gamer Cat there. Martha, Leah the Lab again, Jocelyn, Chrissy again, Kelsey, Fur Babies. 
more puppies. We got some puppies showing up here in chat, y'all. Tom, Rosie Posey, thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate it. Hard case, Simi, Chrissy, plot bug. Almost screwed it up that time. Kristen Janes, Dread Zone, thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate it. Um, Sweet Shelly says, I believe he did it the right way the whole way through. I, I, I mean, if he coddled her too much, and that's why she's acting the way she's acting now, that's tough. That's tough. Richard, pulling for those Seneca, Missouri Indians. Undefeated right now, right? Nice. Um, I grew up as a Web City boy. So, yeah, we we know. We know that football game, man. We know. Those uh, Southwest Missouri football towns, tell you what. Crazy Cosmo. I love the content. You're from Jamaica. Heck yes. Hey, yeah, uh, KWC, mo dude. Heck yeah. Heck yes. How about that that freaking Miami game in Germany, by the way? Oh, my. Poor Tyreek. I feel so badly for him. So bad. Mother Trucker. Uh, Robin Gengimi. Tardis RN. Caleb Rush. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate that. Now we're going to dive over to our our next story, which is, which is a follow us submitted story. I'm just on story two now, right, Tony? Is that correct? Okay. Cool. Okay. It is time. Say Wickles Web is all about sports. Sports. Heck yeah. Um, my, my youngest boy, Brady Thunder, he, he plays football there. He's born for it. <clears throat> okay. This is a follower submitted story. OP, if you're in chat and you want to speak up, you know what to do. Um, hard case with the marvelous confetti. Thank you so much for that. Greatly appreciate it. Chrissy with the bros. Thank you so much. Um, hippo Eeyore, hypo Eeyore, hippo Eeyore. I don't know. Hypo Eeyore. Thank you so much for the roses. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, before I, we get into this follower submitted story, um, we are at 55 of 80 on our gamer cats right now. That's still what we're going for to get Caden Thunder unlocked. Also, we're filming a new episode of the Dusty Thunder podcast this week with our friend Steve. Oh, what nickname did we give him in the last podcast or in his first podcast? Gosh, dang it. Stevie. Uh, I can't remember. Um, Steve. Steve was one of our early podcast guests. He is coming back. Stay tuned for that episode. We're filming Friday morning, so we're going to have fun with that. Next week, we're also filming a new episode of Thunder and Spark, or as Candy Thunder said it today, Spunder and Thark. Uh, so words are hard for all of us today. And don't forget, you can find all of the podcast episodes on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, plus any other podcast channel that's out there. Uh, so, okay, here we go. Follower submitted story. Title of this story is, Is My Dad the Asshole for Kidnapping My Aunt's Dogs? Hi, huge fan. I watch your stories on TikTok every day. This is my story and feel free to use and share it. Thank you. My aunt is a lunatic. It's not dementia. She's only in her 50s. All the women in my family live to 90 because only the good die young. She's always been like this. She turned up to my parents' courthouse wedding in a blue taffeta ball gown that filled a row by itself, and her two sons, my cousins, have spent their lives running interference between her and anyone they wanted to make a good impression on. They're adults now and keep their respective partners well away from her. The oldest eloped, and not even my good Catholic Nana said a word against it. Wowza, she seems like a character. I need to see a picture of this gal. Since her kids fled, oops, I mean flew, the nest, it's just her and her two dogs at home. My aunt's dogs are her fur babies. She has two Labradors and dotes on them. She doesn't train them beyond toilet training, exclusively speaks in high-pitched baby talk, and dresses them in matching outfits. The dogs were constantly, terribly ill and being taken to vets. Uh, (laughs) You got a character on your hands here. We all presumed she was attention-seeking and being a hypochondriac, but we live a few hours away and never saw the dogs ourselves. Plus, the vet clinics kept discharging them, and she had to find new clinics each time. I swear if she named one dog Gypsy and the other dog Rose. After she had gone through seven vet clinics who were all, according to her, incompetent and wanted her babies to suffer, my dad finally... My dad finally pressed her for more. It turned out that their awful demands were that she stopped feeding her pups their favorite snack, chocolate-covered raisins. Yeah, I don't know how those dogs were alive either. My dad immediately jumped in the car, went to her house, and took the dogs. He brought them back to our house and waited for her to come pounding on the door. She did. It was loud. My dad gave her a come to Jesus talk with a lot of swearing. Oop, lost my place. 
My dad gave her a come to Jesus talk with a lot of swearing and refused to give the dogs back until she sat down in front of him and Googled what happens if you give dogs the wrong food. He even found some horrible allergic reaction videos and made her watch those. She had been feeding them exclusively human food, including things like onions that dogs absolutely can't eat. There were lots of tears and screaming, but she did finally listen and only then did my dad give the dogs back. Happy ending. This was a few years ago, and she did stick to her word. The dogs shockingly stopped being ill. It's a miracle. Bubble, the odor of the odor. Bubble, the older of the two dogs, sadly met his maker to cancer two years ago, but Crumble is still living, is still alive and barking at leaves at a very respectable 11 year old. Less happy ending, her youngest child, my other cousin, is getting married in January and is having a family wedding. Pray for him and his poor bride. Oh, no. Yeah, I can't imagine that his mom is going to try to steal the spotlight at all. So the question here is, is my dad the asshole for kidnapping my aunt's dogs? Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> Lady Stormfly says, I'm a vet tech. She was also a Karen owner and was fired from the clinics. Oh, for sure. Yeah, they were incompetent uh, and she was finding new clinics. No, the, the clinics were telling her to, to pound sand um, and also to stop killing her dogs. Which would be, you know, preferable. So, so like the personality traits, have we seen OP, by the way? No OP in chat. Yeah. Um, lock it. Thank you. Appreciate that. No, this is... Uh, this is terrible, and uh, and your dad did the right thing here by by immediately getting in the car, going over to this person that that you all actively avoid, like your life depends on it, and rescuing the dogs from there. Uh, yeah, for for a while, I thought she was completely gypsy rosing them, and uh, and just was you know a Munchausen's by proxy, just projecting on her dog and on her dogs, and and going that route. But no, no, she's just feeding them things that she shouldn't feed them, but never, ever, ever took the time to be like, what does the food that I'm giving them do to them? And is that somehow related to what's making them sick? Never, ever, ever took the time to do that. Also never took the time to be like, should I not wear this gigantic blue taffeta dress to someone's wedding that takes up an entire row? So it's just oblivious, I guess, in general. Janine says, I wouldn't have given them back. You know, I kind of thought about that. I'm like, maybe maybe there needs to be like a, 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 a stabilization period where where you guys kept the dogs, got them eating the kind of stuff that they should be eating, got them healthy, and then returned them to her with a very strict food schedule. That would have been the safer route here. But but apparently, uh, Dad went clockwork orange on her and held her eye, her eyelids open and forced her to watch all of these things to just completely scare the hooey out of her into never doing it again, and it worked. So it was a gamble, but it paid off. Uh, Amanda, dogs are too pure for some humans. I would agree. I, I would agree. <laughs> Sounds like she needs drama. So what's next? Darla says. Yeah. I mean, some people thrive on it. It's like their fuel. <laughs> yeah. The wedding is what's next. They're doing a family wedding. Oh, no. Maybe we'll get another <laughs> She's like, oh, you know what? I have that blue taffeta dress in a storage unit. It's in a storage unit all by its own because it's so big it takes up the entire 8 by 10 unit. But I think I can go get it out. Finally, it's going to see the light of day once more. Laura Smirtlemore with the Gamer Cats. Thank you so much for that, Roberta. Liz Williams, Rebecca. Um, Brew Judaski. Tiffany. Sweet Shelly Bebop. Liz Williams, thank you so much. Luz, Nadja. Julie, Fane, Rachel, thank you guys. Greatly appreciate all the love there. <laughs> Coral, thank you. Uh, we are 67 of 80 on the Gamer Cats right now. We're moving a little bit slower on those. We'll get past them. We'll do it. We'll get there. Coral, I knew what you meant. I knew what you meant. I see that one a lot. Should, should have gotten pet rocks instead. Eh, start with those. Start. Like, you know what? You know what, Auntie? Let's start with a plant. Keep that alive for a month. And then you can have your dogs back. If you've signed this contract that says you're going to follow this very strict food plan. New dress and a carriage ride. There you go. Kim, thank you so much for the share. Greatly appreciate that. There we go. Now we're moving on those gamer cats. 
Okay, I am going to number three. Is that correct? Uh, number four. Four? Oh, three is the, the crazy long one, right? Okay. What is it crazy? It's crazy. We've got a story in here that uh, that is much longer than, than the typical Wednesday stories, but we're going to hold off on reading that one until Candy Thunder gets back but she, because she's actually going to jump on and give feedback for it, right? It yeah, okay. And it takes you on a ride. It's a real ride, so... Okay, so we're going to go to story four here. We're at 73 of 80 on the Gamer Cats. We are almost there. Pipe says, my dogs are doing awesome. My plants, not so much. <laughs> plants don't deserve that, say Wickles. Hey, it's it's like a training period, right? It's a training period. Uh, if you can keep a plant alive for a month, and then at least at least it's an indicator that she's she's learning to care for things. Plants are harder than dogs, Coral. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. We, um, we've we planted like adolescent trees or baby trees in our side yard, I think two or three times now, and something always happens and kills them. Like this time it was a fro- it was a freeze that came through, um, an unexpected one. And and now it's like the, the trees, which were a few feet tall, uh, died. But the little little sprouts from the bottom of them started coming up again. So we're letting those go. But but yeah, we're we're uh we're like oh for two or oh for three on that right now. You just need the right plant. Tiffany says lucky bamboo is so hard to kill. There you go. Or start with like a uh, a succulent or something. <laughs> Amanda, I've kept do- I've kept two dogs alive for years. Killed every plant I've owned. <laughs> okay, so, well, if she can keep a plant alive, then you know for sure she's going to be good to go, right? Clarissa, with a share, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate that. Oh, you've killed succulents, too? And bamboo? Wow, you got to be, like, really trying to, to get that happen, right? Wow. Wow, there we go. We got the gamer cats. Roberta. Roberta. And Tony Spark pushed us over the edge there. He's like, all right, enough of this. He just He's just getting it done. All right, let's go ahead and get some thanks for this, then we'll jump to our next story here. Laura Lee Moore, Tony Spark, TLS Journey, Berlioz, Pam K, Michelle Heather, Valerie Shadowcat, Kit Has EDS, Liz Williams, Mother Trucker, Fane 86, Casey Stone, Ms. Fiery Repic, Candy Thunder, Joss VP, Anastasia Smith, RJHJ1, Bogus Truck Life, Joff Kelly, Golden Owl Supply Co., Lisa Barnett, Smile, MP3, Ob's Little World, Dylan Sprague, This Kid's Mom, Diana 5520, Sweet Shelly, Julius Villella, Villella, I'm really screwing that up, I'm sure, Julius, Vintage 80s Lady, Bebop, Boxer Butt, Donna, uh, ERE Mama, Schnee's Blessings, Kelsey C., and Mama Silver and Riley 1416. Thank you guys so much for that. We're going to get the next one set up here. That one unlocked a another cake story and Caden Thunder. So heck yeah. <clears throat> Let's get the next one set up. My voice is doing weird things. Is that a new one? Is that a new one that I haven't seen before? Oh yeah. You are right. You are correct. Okay, 100 of these is going to unlock what? Tony Spark appearance and confetti. (laughs) All right, before I dive into this reward cake story. Oh, that's not that one? Okay, I've got to change it up. Sorry, I chose the wrong one. Okay. Or I didn't choose the wrong one. It's one of those weird things that won't work. It just won't work. There you go. Okay. Okay. There we go. We're just flipping over to the paper crane. And do you want me to bring the and then move the Okay. Okay. And since you got there, we're going to go ahead and bring him up. Here we go. Let's do the intro. Ladies and Ladies gentlemen. Hey, Dave. Bacon, thunder bacon. What's shaking, thunder bacon? How's uh, how's everybody doing on this lovely 
Wednesday. Hump day. Hump day. Hump day. Ooh. Baby boo. Said so you're so handsome. Thank you, I know. You're so handsome, Caden. I appreciate it. Um extremely tired. I'm I'm also extremely, extremely tired, but in the same way that Dusty is always on Ascon three, I'm always extremely tired. <laughs> I don't feel like those things are equal. They aren't, but you know. Apples to oranges. <laughs> why can't you compare fruit? That phrase don't make don't no sense. Why it. can't fruit be compared? <laughs> she don't know about Pangea. <laughs> uh, uh, Shout I'd out like Dave. for you to, to talk a second about your um, never-ending staircase, infinite stairwell. I, the never-ending stairwell. The never-ending stairwell. Yes. Talk about that for a second um, because it is it is super well-written and everyone who's listened to it absolutely loves it. So just tell them a little bit about that story. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so I wrote a little short story called The Never-Ending Stairwell to post to uh, the... Uh, to, to, to post to the stories to fall asleep to. It's the... Uh, the YouTube thing that Dusty does. If you haven't looked into that, you should go check it out. Super relaxing, but also some of those stories are just awesome to listen to. Like me personally, I love listening to audiobooks and stuff like that because reading is a lot. So it's nice. Um, yeah, that story, it's kind of a spookier type story. Um, it's a, it's like a mental thriller. I don't really know how to explain it without giving anything away, but the stories that I write, I always take inspiration from things like Inception and just Interstellar and things that just warp your mind. And uh, I don't like basic stories, so the things that are unexpected I really like. So if you haven't gone and checked that out, it's pretty interesting. I would give it give it like 10 minutes. It'll probably... You'll at least want to know what happens, whether you like it or not. Like You could be like, oh, this sucks. Like, it's okay, you still listen to it. Whatever. <laughs> You got it, man. Psychological thrillers, yes. Yeah, psychological thrillers, and and um, because we're we're kind of experimenting in a direction of doing more fiction writing and more more recordings of of reading that fiction writing. Yes, um, I think Caden is going to get a lot more at bats to be able to create a lot more longer content like that, and he has just a natural talent for it. I would, I He's would also love faster at writing it than I am. I, I, it, I'm, I'm a slow writer. Um, I think because I get I get tripped up in like doing research and trying to make sure I'm I'm being accurate mm-hmm. and thorough with everything, and he just lets it flow out. I, and I just very talented. I'd be freestyling the story. I'd be freestyling. Yep, you know you know how it is. <laughs> yep. Somebody said, "Is it weird? Is it weird to to call me Dusty and not Dad?" But you uh, only call me Dusty during the stream. I call you Dusty during the stream. I also call you Dusty sometimes to other people, but I call you Dad when I'm talking to you. Right. But like. Other people in the office, when I'm referring to you, I'll be like, "Hey, you think, you think Dusty's gonna enjoy the stream today?" Because it's like it's like your Iron Man persona, you know. Like, you know, some people are Batman and some people are Dusty. Right. You know, you know how it is. I get it. You know how it is. I get, well, it's funny because, uh, like an hour before the stream, I start my prep for the stream. I've got a routine. You gotta I don't do make your, my jock coffee. You gotta well, do your Christian Bale, like getting into character. Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, Hopefully less of an asshole, but yeah. <laughs> um, make my jock coffee, make my water, and I always say it's time to wake wake up Dusty or need, activate Dusty. I need to return some videotapes. <laughs> the human torch was denied a bank loan. <laughs> yeah, that kind of stuff. Anyway, proceed. All right. Hey, Candy Thunder and Ava Thunder just walked in. All right. Woo. Okay. All right. I'm being cued to leave. <laughs> Sorry, Not everyone. Me. It's our producer, Tony know, Spark, is giving us the... I know how much you all care for me so, so much. I have to go now. They love you. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> he blows the kisses. He blows the kisses at you. He, he blows the kisses. Uh, we've had him read stories sometimes, so... Um, yeah, we'll have him do that again at some point. Well, Mr. Beans... <laughs> Uh, B. B. Adamson said, "We'll miss your beans." Yeah, we do need we do need a Caden Thunder sticker, don't we? Uh, we don't have like the super emoji. We do have we do have an emoji character like is in that graphic intro that we use. So yeah, I need to I need to create the emoji version of it. 
I put you on a can of beans. There you go. Your own branded bean can. It's amazing. <clears throat> okay, I am on story four, correct? Nope, now you're cake story two. Now I'm cake story two. All right. Okay, here we go. Cake story number two. Because y'all unlocked it. Here we go. Uh, this is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the astronaut for not getting my boyfriend a birthday cake? Damn it. I'm 27 female and my boyfriend, Dan, is 33 male. We've been together for 11 months and moved in together last month. Since it was the first birthday since we started dating and moved in together, and also because I just wanted him to feel special, I asked if he wanted to throw a party at our place, which he enthusiastically agreed to. I organized a dinner with his parents on the day of his birthday, and the party was two days later because he couldn't get time off until... He couldn't get time off work until then. I invited all of his close friends, some of his work colleagues, and the family members I knew he would want there, including his parents, who said they'd only be dropping by quickly. That sucks. <clears throat> but I get it. People are busy. The guest list quickly swelled to 150 people. That's a birthday party right there, tell you what. Most of whom I didn't know and had never met, so I spent most of the evening hosting and meeting people. His parents missed the singing of happy birthday, but when they got there and I told them I had saved them a few birthday cupcakes to take home, they were livid and asked why there was no cake. I said, when I asked Dan, he said he couldn't give a flying horse shit what we did for cake as long as loved ones were there. So I got a cupcake table instead so we wouldn't have a lot of leftover cake. Neither of us wanted to eat. This made them angrier, and I said I didn't appreciate their son enough or, and they said I didn't appreciate their son enough to even get him a cake. Dan was on my side initially, but now is taking theirs. What? Dan, what are you doing? And they are harassing me about not appreciating their son enough, along with some family members. Things are really tense between Dan and I because I know he agrees with me, but won't take my side, and we've been fighting over it. I feel like no one is on my side with this. Am I the astronaut? Cupcakes are cake. It's in the name. It, it is literally in the name. You got hundreds of them because you had 150 people there. And, and if you have 150 people, unless it's a wedding or something, logistically, it makes a lot more sense to do cupcakes. And if he said he didn't give a flying horse shit what you did for cake, cupcakes made sense. You did get him a cake. In fact, you got him hundreds of cakes. They were just really small. I don't know that that hand motion was required for that, but you know what I mean. They they were just really. It's a cup of cake. Yes, it is in the name. It's a. It's this is ridiculous. The the parents being shitty about this. I'm like, eh, whatever. Well, I mean, yeah, okay. You're mad because you think OP doesn't care enough to get your son a cake, yet you couldn't care enough to spend more than a few minutes at his birthday party, and you said you were just swinging by. So, eat glass. Uh, you hypocrites, I guess. What? But it is Dan being the swing vote here and changing his mind from being okay with it to being like, you know what? You're right. I am. I. I. I am unappreciated. I should have had a cake. You're right. No, Dan, because uh, this is one of those. What is the commercial? What's the brand that does the throw the red flag? Is it progressive? Yeah, I think it's progressive. This would be one of those times where you want to throw the challenge flag and be like, okay, watch where you said you didn't give a flying horse shit. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so now you've changed your mind. Dan, you're an idiot. You're being manipulated by your parents. Your parents are assholes. OP, you did the right thing, but this is an indicator for you of what the rest of your life is going to be like because he's clearly being controlled and now you can't trust his words anymore because they're so easily swayed by his parents. <sighs> And now you have to think about those life decisions where their opinion is going to get involved, like purchasing a house, having kids, where you live, everything. I think you're going to have to have a conversation with him and be like, hey, um, do you have your own opinion? Or, or do your parents like send you messages for everything they want you to say and you just regurgitate that? Are you just following their script? Is that what you're doing? <clears throat> Not okay. Not okay. Uh, NTA for you here, OP. 100% NTA. <laughs> Say wiggles. Parents can go sit on a rusty nail. There you go. I like it. Uh, parents are right here. Because not only did they not care enough to do anything other than drop by, 
but they meddled and created drama when they were there. There are shit stirrers, like professional shit stirrers who do this for a living. And it's all they do is they make appearances and stir up shit and then leave. Right. And maybe they do that to distract from the fact that they, that they didn't care enough to spend some time there. That is a possibility. This could be a distraction, but their ability to sway him so easily is hugely concerning for me. And I'm going to red flag that again. And I do think that Dan needs to go on the scale here. Dan, 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 Dan it, Dan. <sighs> he definitely could have done that differently. He definitely should have done that differently. I'm thinking he definitely shouldn't have been the swing boat here and changed his mind just because his parents were upset. I'm going to put him at a two. He might be a one. His parents are a one, but I feel like he's just being manipulated by his parents. So I'm putting him at a two. He's allowing it to happen, which is what gets him up to being a two. But he needs to change it. He needs to change this and stop allowing himself at 33 years old to get fired up because his parents have a problem with something that he didn't have a problem with before. It's bullshit. Not okay. And be an adult, Dan. Come on, Dan. Eat one of the cupcakes, Dan. Put the cupcake in your mouth and stop talking, Dan. Just do that. Just do that. <laughs> Victorine. Yeah. I want to have a cake, mommy. Where's my cake? Did you put a candle in one of the cupcakes and sing happy birthday to him? You did. You sung happy birthday. I'm assuming you put a, a candle and a cupcake and you blew that out. You still not okay with it? Boy. Boy. This guy. This freaking guy. Nope. Hey, we're at 71 to 100 on our uh, paper cranes right now. And that one is to bring Tony Spark up and to get some confetti rock and roll on. But I think we're ready to start our long journey of a story. Is that right? Okay. And Candy Thunder is going to be involved for feedback on this one. Have you already read it? Have you already read it? Or are you going to be hearing it for the first time as I narrate? Okay. <clears throat> you flipped uh, you flipped a coin on what oh y'all were fighting over the the story oh that means it's really good then it's really good a crazy reader says i bet he didn't do anything for her birthday like this well they just moved in together i mean they've been, they've been together for a while but yeah now now the bar is like what's he gonna do for hers Joanne, awesome sized cup. Heck yeah, that's my uh, Candy Thunder got this one for me. It's my Army Green Stanley Cup. Doing these um, and reading stories and just talking a lot requires a lot of water, especially this one. It's going to be a long story. Ellen says, I would absolutely not be staying with this kind of person. I, I think that's, I think you're on the right path there. The indicator here of, of how the rest of their life is going to be is going to suck. This is going to be a, a bigger, bigger problem. Okay, here we go. This is a follower submitted story and it's a long one, but it is quite the ride. Don't forget, you can submit your own story at dusty-thunder.com or on the Dusty Thunder subreddit um, or in the Facebook VIP group if you are a part of that group. Uh, you can also submit not just AITA stories, but uh, like Petty Revenge, any kind of story, really, um, especially stories to fall asleep to. If you have done fictional writing that you would like to give us permission to use as a story to fall asleep to, please send it to us. We would love to use that and we need more of it. So here we go. Title of this story is my mom was the target of a romance scam, but won't stop talking to the scammer. Ah, oh, shit. For context, my dad has had a neurological disorder that causes him to sometimes be mean to people he cares about. As the one who lives with him, my mom is the one who bears the brunt of that. Last Thanksgiving, my mom confided in me that she met someone, we'll call him Jimmy, on Facebook and had been talking to him for months. The person was allegedly the lead singer of an 80s metal band that had a one-hit wonder that gets played on New Year's Eve a lot. What the what a persona to assume here. She said he contacted her after she commented on one of the band's posts and they've been talking ever since romantically. I asked her if she's I asked her if he's ever solicited money from her and she said no with the exception of the money she had to send for her super fan VIP box that he was sending her. <clears throat> Notice the, the verbiage there was sending her not sent, not has received was sending her. I asked how much 
asked how much and she didn't know. So we looked at her bank account and it was over $8,000 by then. That better be a damn fancy VIP box. I explained to her that this was a scam, pulled up the FBI website and showed her warnings about such scams, and even emailed the band's management who replied immediately and said it was a scam. My mom acted like she believed me and said she would stop talking to him. Internally, I went into panic mode, called my sister, and told her to meet me at a gas station where I told her the whole story. She confronted my mom about it too, and we both doubled down that it needed to stop then and there we decided it was best not to tell my dad as we were unsure how he would react but with his but with his condition if he has already words are hard but if but with his condition if he was already mean to her this would have made it so much worse however as the months went on she refused to stop no matter what we did or said or the toll that took on her relationships with both of us but especially with my sister things came to a head in august when her facebook account had been hacked and stolen she messaged me one day worried that her email had been hacked so i logged in to make sure the account was secure and updated the password when i logged in i saw a bunch of emails from band management and interpol there is a ton to unpack There's a ton to unpack there, so for the sake of brevity, here's the short version. Apparently, after my sister and I got on her case, she started asking Jimmy questions and was eventually fed a fabricated story about how his phone had been stolen at a show and the person she sent all the money to was an imposter who was defrauding her. But now she was talking to the good Jimmy, who got his... Also who got his band management involved and they put her in touch with Interpol, The emails from them basically said that they were looking for the bad Jimmy, but in order to start an investigation, she needed to pay $4,500 up front. Dude, Interpol is not a skeezy private eye office down the street where you have to pay them to investigate. It's that the... Her emails back indicated that she intended to do it, and I realized I couldn't sit on this any longer and allow her to keep sending money. I called my cousin, who I'm close with, to vent and ask advice, and she started putting pieces together. My aunt had been worried about my mom for months because not only was she acting weird, but she was borrowing large sums of money, $500 to $1,500, from four of her five siblings, but had borrowed almost $8,000 from my aunt alone. I knew I needed to alert my family to get their help, but also to make sure they didn't send her more money i called my brother and filled him in on everything and then did the same with my aunt a lot happened over the next six weeks and things escalated for one thing we learned that the amount of money that she sent was dramatically higher than i ever imagined over forty thousand dollars we tried the tough love approach the compassion approach everything we can think of and nothing is working Finally, at the end of September, we went to their house to try and help figure out a way out of this. However, I got my hands on her phone and started going through it and found much more than I was prepared for. This man was trying to convince her to divorce my father, and she was going along with it, sharing plans with him. We all got into it for hours, and a lot was said. Ultimately, I confiscated her phone. She's on my plan, and I pay for it. Things were particularly ugly. She tried getting her phone back from me to the point of putting her hands on me as I was trying to leave. I've never seen her like this. She was fully unhinged and not the mother I know. A couple of days later, she called my brother, sister, sister sister-in-law, brother-in-law, and me crying and apologizing. It felt like we had finally gotten through to her and she was starting and she was going to start doing better at life. With the phone in hand, I went to the FBI to file a report. However, didn't get much help as it's something I have to do online and must document each individual financial transaction in detail. And there are a lot of them with a lot of details. Since she didn't have a phone and they don't have a computer or anything, she started emailing him from work. However, he slipped up remotely. He slipped up when replying to her and accidentally emailed both her work and personal email, which is how I got wind of it. I warned her that if they caught her emailing this guy from her work email, she'd be fired. The next month calmed down a lot. To my knowledge, she had no contact with him and no way to contact him. Then last Thursday, she called me crying, said she'd been let go from her job. She said she needed her phone back to look for a new job. I understood and agreed and planned to meet up with her over the weekend to give it back to her. However, that might... However, that night, my dad took a spill while taking the trash cans down to the street and hit his head. So I ended up going there that night to take him to the ER. 
I looked her in the eye and told her I was reluctantly trusting her and that if she messed this up, it was going to be very bad. She promised no shenanigans, so I gave it to her. The next afternoon, I looked in her email and sure enough, she was emailing him again. Wowza. I immediately called her from work and lost my shit. Took, I told my siblings, and they have all gave her a piece of their minds as well. We've been fighting since then. Then today, I saw that she reset the password to her Bitcoin account, which is how she was sending Jimmy money. I calmly called her and asked about it, but that turned into a fight. I texted my siblings and let them know, and it again escalated. Come to find out that she was fired from her job for emailing this guy from her work email. She's still talking to him and has no intention of stopping. At this point, my siblings and I are discussing how to protect my dad, but that he now needs to be involved. Oh, shit, he still doesn't know? Oh my god. We are talking about setting up powers of attorney, his own banking, contingencies in case of divorce, and so on. We all called her and told her that we would be letting we all called her and told her that we would be letting my dad know what was going on, and she told us that she's already told him. I don't know, because, you know, everything she's told you up to this point has been a lie, so don't believe it. We told her to put him on the phone, and she did. He tells us the story she told him, which put the dollar amount at 8 k not 40 k omitted the romance aspect of it, and had no mention of anything that would make her look bad. So she told him something. She told him that she got scammed out of eight grand, and that was it, and he believes her. He told us, she's my wife of 46 years. All of you can get fucked and hung up on us. I don't know what to do. Holy shit. Uh, so, yeah, this was a ride. This was a journey. Uh, can you, I can't imagine, can't imagine like my mother being stuck into this, this situation and not being willing to do anything about it to get herself out. And again, the title was my mom was the target of a romance scam, but won't talk stop talking to the scammer and joining me to talk about the story is candy thunder come on up i'm not, I'm not doing the intro button for you this time oh, thank, we're... thank god <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> uh, step forward just a little bit more okay okay thoughts um i think uh you guys might get mad at me um but i actually feel bad for the mom um and it's because of the first line where she said that her dad is really mean um like they don't know what's going on um and i think this woman was so lonely and in need of like love and affection that she literally paid forty thousand dollars to some spammer on the internet because it made her feel good it made her feel like somebody cared and it's so messed up like it's messed up that she did this but she was freaking lonely like yeah, and lonely right. can loneliness can drive a person insane like to not feel like that connection to anyone. And I don't think she had that connection. So if this was my mom, like I would be pissed at what she did. I would be pissed that she lied to my dad. Like, but I would also want to fix the freaking problem because she, like she was in so deep. Um, she had to have had some kind of like, there's, I don't know. Like, I just feel bad for her. I feel, I literally, legitimately feel bad for this mom. Uh, so, someone had said in chat here a second ago, and I think it makes perfect sense. Like, there's lonely, but she got addicted. Oh, for sure. Like, that affection, like, fed that, that missing part of her. And so, she just, she went in so freaking deep. Like, and at this point, I, without, like, taking away her email and taking away her, however she was contacting this guy, um, I feel like... Unless you pull that from your mom, like she's going to keep going back. It's yep. like an addiction. It's she's like a, a drug. She's an addict, yeah. Yeah. And she keeps getting that fix. Right. And so it's like you need to s delete everything and monitor that and or monitor their finances. I do believe what they said about doing with the dad um, and like making sure that he has the money he needs. Because it could be that the dad is ha like dementia well, they, they or something. Brought, yeah, but I guess. Like something yeah. could be starting with the dad and they need to be able to make sure that the money is there for him too. Cause it's, I'm sure it's his money too. Yeah. Well, and if he's not of sound mind, there may be a, a power of attorney play that they can utilize right now because he told them all to get fucked, which, which doesn't help. Yeah. Uh, but that's because his <laughs> wife lied to him, but, but replace, replace like her talking to this guy with crack or right. anything else. Right. She's lied. She's borrowed money. She's stolen money. She's alienated herself from her family if you replace that with like any kind of actual substance, 
she'd be checked into a facility by now. For sure. And she, yeah, she, she got herself fired from her job because of this. So it, she, this is an addiction and it's, it's just like any other. And there has to be drastic action taken to do something about it. I think that the problem is that we as a society are not set up to treat this kind of addiction, right? It's yeah. that we don't have like a facility for, for, for them to check into or do that. I it's almost, it's almost like a mental health crisis yeah. like where she would need to be checked in and like. But I mean, I don't think like a 96 hour hold is going to fix this problem no. because she would just be right back to it. I think having to take away the sources and maybe and I guess they did tell the dad what actually happened and he didn't believe them. Okay, he would or, he had already been duped and yeah. I'm sure she had been reinforcing that. And uh... and that's the part where I where I do lose um, like empathy for her because she lied to her husband. Yeah. And again, that's addiction. She like, lied to gonna, everyone. You're going to lie. But I would. I would shut down like whatever, how she, however she's using to communicate, I would shut those down. Yeah. Like if you can't, if you can't act like an adult, then you're going to get treated right. like a kid. Uh, user 913. Uh, yeah. Possible guardianship for the parents. And, and I think this is all evidence to support that. And you have to protect <laughs> them from themselves at this point. And I don't know if they're surviving on like yeah. dad's retirement or, or mom's retirement. Or, well, she got fired. So. It, but if he wasn't working because uh, because of of his issues, then I don't know if they're what are they living on, right? They, uh, and now she's she's literally borrowing money to give to other people that are part of her addiction. So like, how are they surviving? I have no idea. But that's where the self protection's got to come in, or you you could use this as evidence for a guardianship to step in to protect them from themselves. Um. Also, screw the freaking people who think scamming like you're disgusting like despicable humans right like to do this it's like the same people that are stealing content just taking yeah. advantage of people you're just taking yeah. things from others and because it's a easier lazy asshole. right because it's easier it's it's an easier way to make money oh yeah that's think, that's a that's a <laughs> that's a hot topic right oh. yeah the the stealing content um because yeah, we deal just, with it all the time and tiktok doesn't give a shit anymore which is awesome thanks for that stop <laughs> If you don't want us to get canceled here. Yeah, uh, it is, thank you, Coral. It's so, it is gross. It is, it's, uh, it's so, I can't imagine doing that to somebody else and being like, yeah, this is how I'm going to live. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to use this on somebody else's time. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. That's terrible. All right. I'll let you wrap it's it up. terrible. Thanks, Tater. Thanks for having me. Always. Always. Um, oh, we hit we hit our, our paper crane goal here. Let's go ahead and do that real quick, and then we'll wrap this story up, and then we'll move on to our next one here. This is just a, a freaking journey, and I don't – a drastic action is going to be needed, right? And it, there's the pain creates change approach, but this is an addiction, and there's going to have to be – you've created pain for her before, before by taking her phone away, and she just finds other ways to get her fix. So I would start treating this like a substance issue and and be that drastic with it. Ah, Laura Lee Moore, Michelle Heather, TLS Journey, Julius, Pirate Pops, Pam K, Ms. Fiery Repic, Kelsey C, Riley, Tours 96, Annabelle, Casey Stone, Tony Spark, Jasmine, uh, Jasmine Morgan, Lady Stormfly, Berlioz, Boxer Butt, Candy Thunder, Anastasia Smith, Piotr, Liz Williams, Chelsea Stevens, Marjoline Smile MP3 Dylan Sprague uh, Charles the Sassy Mom Sweet Shelly Heidi J Rain Falls Donna RJHJ1 Mama Silver Jarby Rebecca Bain and Justina thank you guys so much for that that unlocked Tony Spark getting up here we're gonna get the Tony Spark up here he's gonna talk for a minute okay the next one we're gonna set up is gonna unlock a spicy cake story and feedback with the helmets hey oh and I did bring the uh, the actual Halloween costume helmet this time. Yes, the one I can't breathe in, that one. Yeah. We'll see how long I make it in it. Okay, this is... This one is a step up. Let's see what happens. Let's also see if I can find it. There it is. Okay. It was at the top. It's not in the right spot. Okay. Spicy cake story number two. Caps lock again. Spicy cake story number two and helmet feedback. Boom. There we go. We've got 50 
Polaroids. 50 Polaroids to unlock the spicy cake story and feedback in the helmet. We are rocking and rolling. We're at 69% of our likes goal right now, which is 700K. So thank you so much for that. What is going on with my docs right now? It is not. It's like locked up and won't let me switch tabs here. I don't know what's happening. I can't get back to my story. There we go. Finally got there. Finally got there. Um, Okay, so the next one that I'm about to do is four. Is that right? But for now... But for now, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen Tony, Tony Stark. Stark. Hey, what's up? How's everybody doing? Everybody good? The uh, after the long story, it's a longer story than we usually read on here, but it was. It was a follower submission. And it was wild. It was it was quite the ride on it. So, is everybody having a good Wednesday? Good hump day. Look, I could give the best hugs. Huh? It depends. Ted Ted gives really good hugs. Ted's a very friendly guy. Tony, well, maybe not so much, but I can listen to more. I know, I know. I don't know. I didn't see OP in the chat on that one, so. Maybe we'll get an update or they'll see the story and um, yeah. Darla, my friends are, uh, went to deer camp today too. Not a, not a deer hunter, not a, not a hunting guy. They like go and sleep out in the cold and tents and do all that. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not about that. How are we going to get more Ted on here soon? I don't know about on here. The only thing Tony Spark hunts is a good time. That's right. Uh yeah, I here's the problem with Ted's content. Ted has to remember to make the content in the moment, and that's a bit of an issue. Hey, but Tony got new shoes. I did get new shoes for those of you. I was gonna I was gonna make the official announcement in the VIP live oh, today, sorry. but I did. For those of you in the, show them in, the VIP. in the VIP live, the uh the painful for some, it might have been a painful, anxiety-inducing experience of my my <laughs> shopping dilemma, including Candy Thunder, who I think her anxiety was building throughout that entire thing. And and for the, it was a lot. The the anxiety was just wafting, and it was, it was she couldn't handle it. It was it was a lot, and it was apparently we unpacked a few things. And uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I did. I did get new shoes. I didn't just get one pair of shoes. I got two pairs of shoes. Hey oh, so. You know. You're going back soon, right? Maybe. I don't know. I think I've talked myself out of that. Bex, it's your birthday month. Happy birthday month. Happy birthday month. Yeah, the VIP. Yeah, that was that one. You talk about something that got off the rails real quick. It was the VIP life last week. Not fast enough. <laughs> A terabyte. How fast can you run? <laughs> Running away from my shopping anxiety <laughs> slowly. Oh, hell. <laughs> Jamie, yeah, I am. I am talking myself out of things. Well, listen, I probably would have bought him, but I didn't have a very good day at the casino that day. So <laughs> that was a yeah. Thirty-one on Thanksgiving. Nice. Thirty-one. Be thirty-two in May. Have a birthday, Taylor. Cool. In Meadow. I hate shopping too, Shell. It's a whole thing. It was a whole, it was a whole long rabbit hole and, and yeah. Shopping anxiety, babe. Like <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to let uh, Dusty read. What are we reading? A was that a story? Yeah. Like, was that a unlock a story thing? Uh, oh, no. You're supposed to shoot me with confetti oh. if you wanted to. Oh, yeah. With the, the real ones? Yeah. Heck, yeah. Just want to get hit with the... Uh. Oh my god, it was so loud. Yeah. Yeah. It was a it was a therapy session. It wasn't it was a little bit of a therapy session, but apparently it worked. I did my own work and I went shopping. So yeah. that's that's good. Mission accomplished. So now I'm good for, you know, another year or so before I need to buy shoes again and we'll go through the whole thing all over again. So prepare yourselves for that one. But anyway, bye guys. Thank you, Tony. Uh, we need to we need to start a a poll 
like a like a guessing game kind of thing, you know, like you guess how many M and M's are in the jar. Only it's going to be uh, guess how many shoes are in Candy Thunder's closet. How about Dusty? Yeah, and then guess how many shoes are in Dusty Thunder's closet. Like just, it'd be a fun game. It would be a really fun game. Never shop on a weekend, Spec Mama says. Um, I'm proud of Tony Spark. He went out. Yeah, he went out and, and took a took a big leap. Got himself two pairs of shoes, yeah, and they awesome. they look good in the VIP live. You'll be able to see them. So. That's going to be fun. Uh, Jamie says, Candy is amazing at all the hats she wears. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Lady Jane, uh, 104 Sunshine, Janelle, thank you guys so much for the uh, the roses there. Greatly appreciate it. Plut Bug, you as well. Tours, Brooke, TLS, Casey Stone, Rebecca Bain, just resubbed. Glad to have you in the gosh heckin' fam. 104 Sunshine with the first gift to the heart me. Thank you so much. Lisey Lex with the team bracelet and the Polaroid. Lady Jane, uh, Caitlin, Spec Mama, uh, Jane, Liz, Crystal, Annabelle, Desert Fox, Andrea, Lady Jane again with the first gift as a heart me there. Thank you so much. Sweet Shelly, Haley, Rainwater, Nadja, Pam K, Ms. Fiery Repic, AJ, Janelle, Boo Boo. Thank you guys so, so much. Casey Stone, you as well. Laura Smirtle Moore, I see you. I see you there. All right, let's go ahead and bounce to our follower submitted story here. Here we go. <clears throat> OP, if you're in chat, you know what to do. This follower submitted story is titled... Am I the astronaut for not wanting my partner to hang out or speak to one of his co-workers? Hi, Dusty. Thank you for taking on my story. I've been watching your videos for a while now and need some advice, but I think I know the answer. My partner, 32 male, and I, 29 female, have been dating for two and a half years. We have a two-year-old son together. It's fair to say that my partner isn't the loyal type, but I thought after having a child, he would mature up and stop all this nonsense. I've caught him out a few times, unfortunately, but staying but stayed hoping he would change. But this recent catch has got me going crazy. Uh, they should, I should have done this right when OP said here, it's fair to say that my partner isn't the loyal type. This is not going in a good direction already, OP. Oh, plot bug, is this yours? Is this your story? Is OP here? Oh, Lana Bear. This is Lana Bear's story. I feel for you already, and we haven't even gotten too far into the story here. Okay. Um, This last line I'll read just because I don't know if I've read it yet. But this recent catch has got me going crazy. P, my partner, was talking about his coworker, G, 23 female, just casually, and I didn't think anything of it. I went to charge his phone and make sure he had his alarm set for work, and when I got to... And when I went to get rid of the tabs on his phone, I saw a text message saying, Hey, gorgeous, and it was to G. I immediately went into the messages and started reading previous ones. They wanted to meet up at the beach, possibly with her son, and hang out. And he also sent her money, which made me even more mad. What the? <clears throat> Just to clarify, he never wants to go or come out to the beach with our son. And we have been struggling with money pretty much since we had our son. Since I have... Sometimes I have to ask my dad for money just so we can get by. I decided to message G on social media and she was honestly rude. I told P that I didn't want him to speak to her anymore. He blew up on my face saying there was nothing going on and I have insecurities that he can hang out with females and uh, and he was just helping her out. He was just helping her out with money. Nothing more. Mm, yes, because because normally when people, you know, make a donation to a worthy cause, they say, hey, gorgeous, and it's all its all very innocent. Am I going crazy? Why say, hey, gorgeous, if there wasn't something to it? And why not include our family on a beach date? Money issues I, can, I just can't get past because he always complains that we are behind in bills. Also, he has now changed his password on his phone. So, am I the astronaut for not wanting my partner to hang out or speak to one of his coworkers? Uh, no, but you're the asshole to yourself for still being with this dickweed. Clearly, he doesn't value you at all. Clearly, he doesn't respect you at all. Clearly, he's not going to step up and be the man that you want him to be in your family here. This is not going to change. So either you're accepting who he is and just accepting the fact that he's not going to show you the kind of love that you deserve, but he's also going to bankrupt you all and keep you poor because he's giving money to women that he finds attractive for whatever reason. It, it, none of it makes sense. 
And this is one of those things where I think I think a lot of young families specifically stay together because they're like, we don't we don't want to break up our family. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now. You are setting the example for your child right now of of what love and a relationship should be. And also, I am telling you right now, if if you are staying together because you don't want to break that family up because you think that, that that's somehow the magic to happiness for your child, your child is much more likely to be happy and to grow up happy if they have two separate happy homes rather than one miserable one. I don't know what home life is is like for you right now, but you've got a two-year-old. You've got time to get this right. You've got time to make the right decision so that the the example that they see growing up here isn't isn't oh it's it's okay to get cheated on. It's okay to treat someone disrespectfully like that. This is love. This is what love is. You choosing you isn't really a selfish thing because you choosing you, you choosing happiness, your kid will see. Your kid is watching. And this is the bar that lights the path that they're going to follow. You have to show them how you want them to live by living that way yourself. And that's the hard part. And that I think is it, it conflicts with that, that internal need to keep that family together. And I, and I know because I've been in that position too, you know, you stay in those situations because it's like, I don't want to bust our family up for our kids, but sometimes you need to bust your family up for your kids. I know it's hard to wrap your brain around right now, but it's true. It's tough. It is tough. It's internalized hatred. It's going to be, uh, EVQ says it's going to be so hard, but it's only going to get harder. And right now, I think you have to look at it this way. Yes, it's going to be difficult. It, it would be difficult, you know, raising, raising a child as a single mom. Um, but there's, there's, worthy pain there's positive pain like it's going to be hard but rewarding right now you are actually experiencing more pain but this isn't rewarding pain that you're experiencing right now because right now you're it sounds like you're you're pretty much raising your kid on your own anyway but also you're feeling all of this additional pain because you're being treated like garbage you are worth so much more than that. And you deserve to be happy and you do not deserve to be treated like this. Accept that number one, but even more so that is not the example that you want to set to your child. I know it's difficult. I know that's hard, but that's what it is. But there are so many people that are in that position right now. I get it. Um, but yeah, he's also financially affecting you right now as well. Um, and willing to do things with other people's kids that he's not willing to do with your own. Sounds like a deadbeat. Sounds like a deadbeat. <clears throat> uh, Sarah Ibbotson says, I'm a single mom. I'm a single mom now and it's hard, but worth it. Ah, spec mama says, uh, sounds like the other kid is his too. I- it's possible. It's oh yeah, if he's sending her money, it's possible. It is entirely possible. Lana of have applied for houses just in case. Man, I I would follow that route. Uh I definitely would follow that route and just just playing on it. And if he wants to be a part of your life, he's gonna have to earn it. And um and you're gonna have to go through the process of setting up a parenting plan and doing all that stuff, but he's got to uphold his end of that as well. So he's got to earn being a part of your child's life too. Something tells me he's not going to take that seriously. He's going to end up slipping. He's going to end up um, not being involved. And that's his choice. But you are going to have the opportunity to live your own life and make your own decisions and create a life for you and your child. Uh, And you are going to be five years down the road so much happier that you did it. This is the scary part. This is the hard part right now. Everything else after this is, is hard but rewarding. Coral, um, he's never going to put you first. Yeah. I mean, that's, this is tough. This is, this, <laughs> everything that he's doing here is telling you that he doesn't give a shit. And that sucks. And leaving with the expectation of, of 
here here i think it's important to to keep this in mind like you would be doing this so that you can create a better life for you and your child that comes with with an acceptance of um i am okay with it just being me and my kid right i think you have to get to that point where you're completely happy and okay and can and can live a happy life without needing that other person into it to be okay and to start down that path but starting down that path with that mentality also provides fertile ground and removes the pressure for someone else to show up to be the person that you want and need to be a part of both of your lives. Don't expect that to happen, but not expecting it to happen takes the pressure off of it actually happening. And that's what happened for Candy Thunder and I both. That's how we ended up together. Misty, welcome to the gosh heckin' fam. Glad to have you here. Tony Sparks is trying to trying to prime the Polaroids here. You know, we've got 12 of 50 of the Polaroids going on. And as a reminder, that is going to unlock another spicy cake story and feedback in the friggin' helmet, which is which is way more realistic than our typical helmet here. It's part of my Halloween costume. A child never changes a person. Wise Al. Yep, I would agree with that. Um, I mean, it, kids change a lot of things, but but people who are who they are, I think. I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that. I think I think a lot of people um, live a very selfish life until they have kids, and then uh, something something biologically changes, and and they start living as different people. I think it is possible for them to grow up. I think that's the point. It's it is possible for them to grow up. So many people choose not to, and that's the shitty part. Oh gosh, Jessica says this hits home going through something similar and we have a 10 month old and I'm currently pregnant. Damn. Like, I, nobody deserves to be treated like shit, like they don't matter and to be just willy nilly cheated on and uh, and to be gaslit. And, and whenever you ask about it and try try to prevent them from talking to people that they're clearly cheating on you with, turn it around on you. Like it's... Understand what's happening. First of all, you're being gaslit by a narcissist who gives zero shits. Well, okay. Why is he there? Because he's got a he's got a place to sleep. He's got it's a it's a matter of convenience. Uh, Lady Van Landingham makes a good point here. If you're already getting money from your dad, go live with him. Hey, any place that you have that's a that's a safe spot to land at least for a while. That takes a little bit of the pressure off is a good idea. Coral says, uh, you're, you're the backup plan. That sucks. No, I feel for you. Um, but I can tell you, can tell you that when you finally make that choice to, and if, if that is the thing that's keeping it together, it's like, you just don't want to bust up your family for your kid. Remove that because that is a, that is a, it's false. This is a false value that got pounded into us by previous generations. Like that's what we're supposed to do, but it is, that is not, it's not true. And I know that for experience. All righty. We are story five. Is that correct? We're rocking and rolling almost halfway to the goal with our Polaroids. Heck yeah. We're rocking and rolling there. 85% on the likes goal right now. We're getting ready to pass 600 K. Rook, thank you. Appreciate you being here. All right, here we go. Uh, we're going to jump into our next followers submitted story. It is another one. Don't forget, just another note to uh, subscribe on the YouTube channel. Only a small portion of the stories that we read actually get posted to TikTok. All of them get posted to YouTube. Um, plus podcasts, plus stories to fall asleep to with the YouTube membership. But we also have a few that end up being um available to the non-members as well. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of content over there. You don't want to miss out on it. And also, uh, yeah, we're, we are officially halfway there on the Polaroids right now. We are 87% on our likes goal right now. Uh, we met the freaking, the, the subs goal that we had for today, which is amazing. We've had that one up for quite a while and we do have this going on. Don't forget. Wheel of Thunder is rocking and rolling today. Top 10 gifters today and two new members of the storm, two existing members of the storm are going to go on the wheel. We'll spin it a couple of times for some cool prizes during the VIP live that happens after the public live today. So uh, let's dive into this. This story is titled 
Am I the astronaut for always getting mad about having to share my bathroom with strangers? Hi, Dusty. Longtime fan. I'd like to remain anonymous, please. I, a 23 female, live with my sister and her fiance, 30 female and 29 male. This is our second time trying to live together as the housing market increased a while ago, making it pretty hard to live on your own in my state. Uh, North Carolina, NC. We frequently get into arguments as they're anemic and I'm not, which means the heat will be on 24-7 and I'm just forced to roast. I've mentioned a multitude of times to them that since my room is smaller, it gets hot way quicker if the vent is closed and to just buy a portable heater as it'll lower the bills as well. Rather than turning it off and on and off all day, crazy, am I right? The other argument is, the other arguments are raised by their need to constantly have guests over. I'm a homebody, and I like a quiet home since my day-to-day is rather busy and loud. I'll interact with their guest if it's a weekend, and they're downstairs, and I know they'll leave soon. And, on, and I know they'll leave soon. Side note, it's a rather large house with three bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms. The half bathroom is downstairs. One is by my room, which is also by the third bedroom, and the last bathroom is up in their room. When we originally moved in, I was supposed to be able to turn the third bedroom into a den for me to game in, but it just never happened as I didn't have time or the resources. So they turned it into a guest room. Here's the real issue. I'm a private person who takes pride in my designated spaces, such as my room and my bathroom. They often have an unannounced They often have unannounced guests come and stay over. Imagine waking up and finding practically strangers in your house having a conversation and moving in prepared to spend the night. Yeah, that wouldn't be fun. I wouldn't have an issue with that so much if they didn't constantly expect their guests to use my bathroom. The first time I let one of their guests this, I'm sorry. The first time I let one of their guests use my bathroom, there was an incident where a child wiped their shitty bottom with my hand towel and put it back, which I had no idea about and used. No. Thankfully, no shit got on me, but I was pretty enraged because the child was old enough to know better. The second incident was when their family came to stay and they asked to use it. I said, sure, sometimes. That turned into a daily thing. I'd recently bought a new white fluffy bath mat, and at that point, since I was going to be the only person to use my bathroom. As you can imagine, it wasn't white for long, nor as fluffy as before, and I had to clean and fix the drain on the on the tub. I'm constantly reminding them it's my bathroom as I paid for everything in there and would prefer others not use it as they don't clean up after themselves. They never offer guests to use their bathroom, which is much larger, but which is much larger, but in their room. It irks me as I have habits in the bathroom and would like full access to use it whenever I have to go without waiting for someone to get out, not to mention stepping on a damp bath mat. I just wanted to partially, I just wanted to partially vent, but also wanted to know, am I the astronaut for not wanting to share as they are constantly expecting me to No, these aren't your guests, right? This is your bathroom. And also I'm, I'm curious here. Wow, Chrome is just being super laggy for me. I can't even scroll. I don't know what the deal is. That's unfortunate. Yeah, it's like I'll try to scroll and it won't. And then all of a sudden it'll just be like mega scroll. And I'm like, I have no idea where I'm at now. Um, So you have, it's you and two roommates, right? I'm wondering if you're all paying equally or are they as a couple paying half and you're paying half which means that uh if that's the case and they're just like half and half then you actually have rights to more of that space than you need to oh, whoa People are bitching about that. <laughs> yeah were you all distracted by my by my by my nipple beard is that what's going on this is my nipple beard uh <laughs> it's because of that white beard hair and this black shirt it just stands out so much i Luckily, luckily it wasn't attached because, you know, every once in a while, uh, like chest hair can just like stick through thinner shirts. Luckily, it wasn't attached because that would have been awkward for everyone. (laughs) She says not for me. Uh, Okay. Uh, (laughs) Um, If it's half and half here, then I think it's even more complicated. But um, so if it's half and half versus them each paying. So it's like a 33%, 33%, 33% rather, rather than 50, 50. Um, no matter what, this is your designated bathroom. They have a bathroom that 
they have control over, and that is part of the area that they pay rent for. Your bathroom is not the guest bathroom. Uh, get a lock. Get a door handle with a lock on it. So you can control it, and you're the only one that can use it. They can tell their guests to use the bathroom that is within their control and that they're responsible for cleaning, and that's the way it should be. I'm I'm assuming that the setup here is you said because because their bathroom is in the room, they're in the master, right? Which is why it's a larger bathroom anyway. But that's why your bathroom is probably off of a hallway. So people assume it's a guest bathroom, but it's on them to communicate with people. And if someone needs to use the restroom, be like, yeah, just go through our bedroom and right there um, instead of instead of directing them to your bathroom. But you can avoid all of that just by putting a lock on it put a lock like with a key. I know there are, there are locks on bathroom doors anyway. I'm saying, or you could even just do like the deadbolt kind of thing, but get a key that only you have because clearly they've abused the system here. Or yeah, like nursery deer is saying here, they should trade rooms. She should have the master and uh, they can share the other with their, with their, their friends and guests. Yeah. And, and I get all the other stuff. It's tough. Um, I mean, if you're, if you're both paying rent, like they can have guests, it would be nice if they told you, but that part, you might just have to deal with the bathroom part. I'm like, no, 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 they're not cleaning it up. They're not paying to replace any of the materials in there. Nope. They can use their bathroom. They can deal with that. And if they want, they can trade you if you want to, if you want to throw down on that, but and that would make it easier because I'm sure the awkward thing for them is that if they have people staying over and then their guests have to walk through their bedroom that they're sleeping in to get to their bathroom. Sure. That's awkward, but that's the deal. And if they don't like that, they can trade your rooms. Fallen star says, once the shit towel happened, I'd have been done. Yeah. I'm with you there. Uh, they can use the half bath. Oh, Akasha. There you go. Oh uh, yeah. I meant to go back and look at that. So there are two and a half baths. There is a guest bathroom somewhere. There you go. Hey, we hit the like skull. Look at you guys go. Very nice. Very nice work. <laughs> Coral, same with the shit towel. Yeah, there is a half bath. Why aren't they using that? And that reinforces even more so. Put a lock on yours. Put a lock on it. <sighs> if you like it, then you should have put a lock on it. Something like that, right? Something like that. 35 to 50 on the Polaroids right now. Oh, Tony's getting... One of the one of the wee little baby confettis out for the like skull. Let's do a sound effect. Ready? Pew. They're so pretty. They are nice. Did that? I've got confetti that like oh, it stuck to my eyebrow. I've got eyebrow confetti and uh, and nipple beards going on today. I don't know what the deal is. Yeah, uh, the the Polaroid one. Yeah, the Polaroid one is moving a little bit slow too. So just a toilet and sink. Uh, oh, yeah, we're talking about what a half bath is. Yeah, no no um, tub in there, no shower. It's it's just just a, just a toilet and a sink. That's all they need, though. And if they do need to shower, then they can go use the master one. All right, we're going to go ahead and bounce over to our next story here. We're at 35 to 50 on the Polaroids right now. Tony said it is a really good cake story, so hopefully we can get there during this story. We'll see what happens, uh, but I'll get through this this next TIFU story, which is something I think we've read like one other time from that subreddit. So this is fun. It's think I effed up, right? That's the TIFU part. Oh, okay. So we can we can uh, we can do the AITA approach to this one at the end. <laughs> Somebody's on the scale. We're gonna see who it is. Kelsey with the marvelous confetti. Thank you so much, Susanna. Getting the Polaroid in there. Uh, C guy, eighty-eight with the high bear. Cassandra with the heart me. Thank you so much. Theosaurus Rex with the hand hearts. Nicole Plutbug, Crystal Misty, Shannon S. Thank you guys so so much. Willow Duggar Thyschafer subscribing for the first. Oh really? Oh hell. The update is I have COVID and I think they left. So that's it so far. I plan to move out uh, when the lease is up. Flavored water. Well, uh, <laughs> did one of those damn guests who used your bathroom give you the COVID? Did they leave it behind? Because that would just be insult to injury in this whole thing. 
I do think though that yeah, I get it. Um, and, and wanting to get out of there is probably a smart move if you can if you can make it all work. Uh, but also, if you have to stay around any longer, get a lock for that bathroom door, and it can be a temporary thing, something that doesn't violate your lease, right? You can get the handle that has the lock on the outside too. You could you could do that kind of approach. Uh, but I get it, and I'd want to get out of there too. I'd want to get there too. Willow Dugger Thigh Schaefer, thank you so much for subscribing to the fam. Welcome. Glad to have you as a member of the gosh heckin' fam, the storm. It's an amazing group of people. Uh, Adrian, Sharon S., Friendly Neighborhood, Tim, Smiley, Abix, Abix, Coldreth Curtin, Kat, Renner, Leadham, Michelle, Heather, thank you guys so much for the love. Greatly appreciate that. Misty and uh, Bestia, Bestia. Lana Bear sending the Polaroids through Lee Hall with the Polaroid here too. The first gift. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Lana Bear with the heart meat. Mary with a Polaroid. Uh, Cat with the hand heart. Mary with the Polaroid. Oh, and another Polaroid. We're getting there. We're inching that direction. We're getting there. And Mary with another Polaroid here. We are just six away. Five. Six away. Lady Jane sent another one through. Bessia with a, another Polaroid. Mary with another Polaroid. Here it goes. <laughs> Lee Hall with another Polaroid. Cat with a um, cat render leading with the Polaroid too. Elise Newman sending two of those through. Casey Stone with another one too. And Rashida with the heart me. Thank you guys. You done did it. You done did it. You done did it. I'm amazed. You guys are awesome. You guys are. That was exciting. I don't know why. It was like, like, Talking while they were coming through to hit that goal. That was amazing. That was fun. Crystal with the Polaroid 2. Queen Huntress. Uh, 84 Nad. Luan. Novak McClinton. Rashida. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate that. Um, I'll finally kill my acuity here at the very end of the stream, which is crazy. Uh, Crystal Gilmore. AK Marie. Michelle Heather. TLS Journey. Theosaurus Rex. Lee Hull Author. Pam K. Tony Spark. Candy Thunder. Annabelle. Jan- Janice. Uh, Southern Country, Misty's Journey, Haley Rain, Mama Joe, Casey Stone, Sweet Shelly, Jelly 55, Boxer Butts, Ms. Fiery Riffic, Lana Bear, Lacey Lex, Kelsey C, Sarah Hibbitson, and Elise Newman. Thank you all so much for helping us get there and pushing us over the hump. You've unlocked the spicy cake story. Or the cake, yeah, you've unlocked the spicy cake story. You done did it. I'm going to get the next one set up. Um, this will bleed over into VIP live for show, but I'm going to go ahead and get it set up. And this is going to unlock some confetti. And it is the I'm Blue. The little alien dude that's uh, sitting the turntables. I'm Blue. That's what that one's doing. Okay. So now we're going to Spicy Cake Story, correct? Yes, yeah, Spicy Cake. Okay. So I see cake a story. <laughs> I almost wish you used an auctioneer's voice on those Polaroids. Uh, Into says, you know who's an auctioneer? Tony Spark. We haven't been able to convince him to do his auctioneer voice on the stream. Do what? Yeah, he went to auctioneer school. Uh, we haven't been able to convince him to use that on the stream yet, but but I agree. He should. He definitely should. Yeah, now he has to. We've been trying. We've been trying for a long time. He just won't do it. It's like too cool. It's like a superpower that he doesn't want to that he doesn't want to release here. All right, here we go. Spicy reward cake story. Uh, special shout out to VIP member Sophia, our favorite Bills fan. Might be our only uh, our only friend who's a Bills fan, right? Uh, for finding the story and posting it in the VIP group. Here we go. Uh, this is from the AIT, so AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the astronaut for leaving my stepdaughter's birthday party after my husband threw out the cake I made for her? Ah, oh, shite. I, female, have been married to my husband, Jeff, for a year now. He has a daughter 12 with his deceased wife. When I first met Jeff, it was obvious that he was struggling as a single parent. For my stepdaughter's birthday, he'd usually get a cake from the bakery. This has been the case since her mom passed away. I thought I'd bake her a cake for her 12th birthday. That was last week as a gesture to show some motherly love and support. Jeff agreed and he told me that his favorite... Jeff agreed and he told me what his daughter's favorite flavors are and what she likes and so on. I baked the cake in the flavor that she likes and the icing she likes, but one thing was missing, and that is the blueberries. I couldn't include them because I went to the nearest store and they didn't have them. I was running out of time and couldn't get them, so I ended up just leaving the cake 
as is, thinking it wouldn't be a big deal. The party started and Jeff was busy taking care of everything else. He then came into the kitchen and asked to see the cake before bringing it out. I showed it to him and he got so angry when he saw that there were no blueberries on top. He went on and on about how I didn't fully commit to making the cake and that he trusted me to take care of it and just basically saying that he should have just ordered one from the bakery. We got into an argument and he ended up taking it and throwing it into the trash can. I was stunned as he said, you know what? Forget it. I'll go get one from the bakery. I blew up and screamed at him. He told me to stop, but I went upstairs, got dressed and left. He tried getting me to stay, but I refused and went to my parents. He later called and texted about how I overreacted and hurt him and my stepdaughter by leaving. Also said that I created the situation by not properly making the birthday cake. And just because I didn't put blue just because I didn't put blueberries on top. I refused to respond, but my parents say he was justified since he must have felt pressured from the stress of making his daughter happy on her birthday. He keeps trying to speak to me, but I don't respond. Am I the ask not? Did I overreact? No. Who, who overreacted in this scenario, right? Who was it? Was it the person who couldn't get blueberries on top of the cake because they didn't have them at the store? Or is it the guy who took the cake and was like, this 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 cake with the with the no blueberries is garbage. Which one? Which one overreacted? And what do you guys think, Tony Spark? Who do you think overreacted here? That guy. That's the guy who overreacted here. And whenever he reached out, was he apologizing or was he just reaching out? Reaching out because you overreacted. No, his his reaction here was one hundred percent not okay. And also, it sounds like it was like a last minute thing, right? So you offered to do it. You were running out of time. It was a last minute thing. You couldn't get blueberries. If anything, why wouldn't he just be like, instead of I'm going to go get a cake from the bakery, why don't I run and see if I can find some blueberries? That would have been the adult response here. Instead of throwing the freaking cake in the trash, that is just disrespectful to you. And you trying to step up and do something for her is huge. And yeah, it would have been great if I had blueberries, but they didn't have them. I don't know what he expects here, but clearly he's putting a lot of pressure on on delivering this vision that he has for his daughter. And I understand that, especially because you know his wife is deceased now. It's probably more important for him that he thinks he needs to do that. But he's got to understand that someone who's trying to help in this situation here and also someone who made it themselves with more meaning behind it than just getting it from the store is trying to help. You don't treat people like shit when they're trying to help. You just don't. It's not cool. Not cool. And I'm going to put him on the Ascon scale here. Uh, I... I, I know that he's going through some stuff, right? What he did, what he did was, a, was a terrible overreaction. It was not cool at all. Um, I don't think he's evil because I think the stress is what drove it behind it. Now, if he doesn't, if he doesn't, like, if he doesn't, what's the word I'm looking for? If he doesn't apologize, if he doesn't make this right, he can very easily become an ask on one in the situation. I think the, the, the stress and dealing with, you know, the deceased ex-wife and the pressure of, of this moment drove him to do this stupid, stupid thing. If he doesn't apologize, he will get into ask on one pretty freaking easily here. You are NTA here. You're NTA. You're not the asshole for, you couldn't control the fact that they didn't have freaking blueberries. He's at a two. He can walk himself back from that, but you're going to have to have a long conversation after this and be like, okay, what drove this to happen? Explain this to me because that was a huge overreaction. And if you're capable of doing that kind of thing over something that is, is small like this, then I'm worried about our future. And I think you're, you have every right to have that conversation and to make that statement there and let him explain. And if it is like, look, her mom always put blueberries on it and she was made, she made sure to do it every time. And I feel like that's the one symbolic thing from this that needs to be there. Maybe you should have communicated that beforehand. Not, not you, OP, him. Maybe he should have stressed that ahead of time. And also, if that was the symbolic thing, like I said before, maybe he should have been like, oh, let me go see if I can get some blueberries instead of let me throw this in the trash and just order a brand new cake. From a bakery. 
That response doesn't make sense. And him lashing out at you for it does not make sense. He's got some groveling to do here. He's got some serious groveling to do here. Yeah. Nah. He gaslights her about it being her overreacting instead of apologizing, rogue mother. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of projection is that? You're overreacting. What he says while overreacting. <laughs> Get your cake out of the trash. Your garbage cake with the no blueberries. What are you thinking? Bring in cake with no blueberries here for my little girl. Huh? Uh, yeah, see, <laughs> he, he, this character that he has does have an accent somehow. Yeah, I don't know. It's because he's angry. Bakeries require 24-hour notice for special-made cakes. He wouldn't have got it either way. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. He would go like, get some kind of basic pre-made cake and then try to find blueberries to put it on it, right? Why not just get the blueberries? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Morgan, I think that's it. I think it was a tradition that, that maybe his wife had before, but, but that also stresses the importance of communicating it ahead of time. And also, um, there's a difference between finding a solution and being part of the problem. In this case, he was just part of the problem instead of trying to really find a solution at all. Angry and talks in a French accent. There you go, Shell. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, we are going to get set up for the VIP live here, so it'll be about 10 to 15 minutes for us. Nope. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, was I supposed to? No, so just put it on to out. Okay, I've got to get my my astronaut helmet on to finish out the live, and and then and then we'll talk some closing notes here. You want to go ahead and do it? You don't know? <laughs> Heyo! Let me get my visor down here. I took the mic out of it because it just sounded all shitty. It probably sounds better just coming from this mic. Here. Get it open. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Oh my god, I'm stuck. I'm not stuck. She, yeah, she would freak out. Uh, claustrophobia would be a big deal there. Uh, okay, so it was, it was uh, Queen Chewy that accidentally got muted earlier in this stream. We're we're sorry, Queen Chewy. Uh, they've been trying to figure out a way to unmute her. It's Tony Sparks' fault. I just want to make sure that we <laughs> that we clarify that. Make sure that, we get that. Make but apparently, sure you can only be unmuted from this program here. So, okay. Uh, we're we're gonna get this we're gonna get this made right for you here, Queen Chewie. We're gonna make it happen. So settings. What are you looking for here? Okay, this is helpful. We're we're hitting the stream, so uh, yeah. In VIP, we'll get that we'll get that fixed. <laughs> we'll, we'll get that fixed in VIP. Yeah, Tony, Tony, it was it was an accident. If you comment on on the the spammers that are in chat, like the sometimes you get caught in the crossfire. It's happened before. Uh, this time it was 100% Tony Spark fault. So. Just wanna, Clarify that again, Queen Chewy. We're very, very sorry. Uh, we're gonna make sure we get it fixed, though. We're gonna. Uh, yeah, it's it's just in chat. It's just on the chat that she got muted. So, um, you know, we will get it fixed uh, for the VIP. We'll get it fixed. Okay, so uh, we're gonna do the VIP live here in ten to fifteen minutes. She's unmuted now. Hey! Oh, wait. So you could do it from there. Taylor. Taylor with the with the save there. Taylor FTW for the win. You got it. Queen Chewy, we're so sorry. Tony Spark would like to offer you his deepest, sincerest apology uh, for accidentally meeting you. You got caught in a crossfire. It has happened before. Uh, yeah, happened to Cooper one time, I think. Okay, so 10 to 15 minutes. We're going to get set up for VIP Live, and then we'll be back to chat with you all for a little bit there. You guys were amazing today. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and for uh, for helping us get through these stories and giving us feedback and being a part of that journey with us. It has been a hell of a fun time. Don't forget, we are doing the, uh, the Wheel of Thunder in that VIP live. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube if you're not already. Take a look at the membership stuff that we have over there. Stories to fall asleep to. There's some different kind of content over there that is worth checking out. Kylie Hall, just subscribe to become a member of the Gosh Heckin' Fam. Welcome to the storm. Glad to have you here. We'll see you all on the VIP live here shortly. Thank you.
Um, uh, Alina, you have to be a member of the Storm to join the VIP Live. Um, one of the, the VIP members. For VIP members, it will send you a notification once that um, once that live goes live. Yep. All right. We'll see you here soon. I had to get the smile. I know it's awesome.